All right, this is Bakari Shivani with Mac Automation Tips. Hey, I'm back with another video, and this one's about Screen Float version two. And I am really excited about uh, talking about and reviewing this application because it was released today, and I've been using version one of Screen Flow for like four or five years now, and um, I use it almost every day. So let's jump in and talk about what is Screen Flow. Basically, ScreenFlow is a screenshot application. Many of you probably use it, but you might not know that that this one, this particular one here, you can take screenshots and they will float at, after you take it. So this, for example, let's trigger the shortcut and we'll just capture this right here. All right, and you see how now it floats on your desktop. This is just really, really great. There are other applications that do the same thing here, but man, I think the screen float has surpassed them all, right? So I'm quickly going to go through uh, some of the things, that, some of the new features in the screen float. And the website itself has plenty of documentation and videos, so I'm not going to go through all the how-tos because it's pretty fairly simple to use, but I want to show you all the options that it exists, right? And so, and you notice what I just did right there. You can also change the opacity just by sliding up and down on your trackpad, for example. But anyway, I'm trying to jump in, jump in the hair a little bit. So you can take this screenshot. And what I normally do when I take these kind of floating shots is because either I'm working on a blog post or working on a website, or I may take a shot that I want as a, as a swipe file, I want to save it, or it might be a how-to screenshot, you know, how I did something and I want to save it to remind myself how to do it. A lot of times it's a quick reminder of something I might just take a shot to remind me to do something later in the day, right? Or if, say that I'm, uh, I have an email that has some instructions in it and I don't want to leave my email open. I'll just take a quick screenshot, put it to the side and reference that screenshot as I'm doing work. So there's a lot of different things you can use for screen float uh, shots like this. But anyway, after you take a shot here, basically what you can do is you can right click and you get all these options here. You can copy the file. You can copy it as a PNG or a JPEG. You can open it in another application, which is pretty pretty uh, universal there, uh, in Preview or uh, any box or whatever application you use. There's Clean, Clean Shot X. Now, I used to have to open some shots from ScreenFlow into ScreenShot X, but now I'm going to do that a lot less. You can share it also to your iCloud, um, you know, to a link, and somebody can download it from there. You can share a download link into also other applications, and you can also share the tech data. So basically, what we have here is we got text inside this, so we can copy all the text, or you can copy certain parts of the text, or you can redact certain parts of the text. I don't think too many other as uh, OCR applications do that like this, and so that's really great. You can also export the shot, you can print it, and you can also go here and you can edit it. You can edit the title, you can give it uh, a, you know, a rating or what have you, stars, you can add a tag to it, you can add some notes to it. And let's go back. Um, you can resize, re uh, crop it, rotate it, and you can also annotate. So that was not in version one, and that was one that was in Clean Shot X. So I, would, I have to do that Clean Shot X, but now you got annotation tools right here within ScreenFlow, which is phenomenal, right? And I'm not going to go through. These are pretty standard here. So you can kind of go through and look at those yourself. So we're going to also, again, we're going to right click. And you can also do in the organize section, you can add it to your favorites before you save the shot. You can add it to a new folder or existing folders. You can rate it. Um, and you can show it in the shot browser, which I'm going to do in a minute. And you um, can open settings. And then another thing is we have here is what's called. Uh, I'll, well, I'll talk about that when I open the set uh, the the shot browser. But anyway, so on in the settings. So when let's go to the shot browser here, and see some of the things that you can do um, here. So in the shot browser, again, you can do some of the same things here. You can. Um, you know, save it to a particular folder right here. And you can also create what's called smart folders. And these are smaller, smart smart folders that are based upon rules that you set, right? And so say, for example, you want to, um, you know, say you don't want to, you wanted to filter all the shots with a certain title, um, all the shots that were uh, in, a, in a certain application or have a certain rating or on your favorites, that kind of thing. So this is a really great way to, you know, organize your shots um, using that. I mean, again, if you're like me, I take 
you know, like dozens of shots uh, throughout the week. And so this is really handy. I don't save all my shots, but the ones I do save, I sometimes come back and look at them. All right. And again, you can do the same thing here within the browser and you you can access the browser in your um, desktop menu bar. So you can do some of those same type of settings and access there. And you can also select the shot and, you know, change the information if you want here as well. And you can export and those kind of things. So you can do a lot of those things. And you can also reopen a shot um, in, you know, in uh, on, if it's if it's saved to your to your browser, you can reopen it and have it floating as well. So let's bring this bring this back up here. And another thing you can do is that you can also quickly save a shot to your desktop by just dragging it to the side there, and it'll go right into your desktop. All right. So let's go. So now let's go quickly to the uh, settings because there's a lot of features in the settings that you can want to look at as well. And so let's take a look at those. Um, so, you know, you can have it launch you know, as you, as when you log in, you can do that. Um, you can go over here to, to the keyboard shortcuts. Now, what I do is I map these shortcuts to a better touch tool finger gesture. So when I want to just do a quick shot, I do a three finger swipe up, right? And that will trigger this shortcut. And I don't have to bring my hand back to the keyboard in order to do that. It's the same thing with the recording now. So now what I did is I do a three finger swipe up while I hold down the option key. And that's the, that's a way I can do it really, really quickly. Um, and so you can, you know, if you use better touch tool, that's the way you can do it. Um, Cause I don't like, I don't like, you know, having to press uh, keyboard sh uh, shortcuts or what have you. I like to use my fingers really quickly to do that. So they have those. You also have a um, shortcut to um, hide all your shots. So when, you know, if they're floating, if you got numerous shots, you want to quickly do that. Again, I have a finger gesture for that uh, to do that. And then you can also toggle the uh, shot browser, which is in the menu bar, the desktop menu bar. Same thing over here, uh, capturing here, you can go through these and you can, you know, you can disable this if you want. Um, also, you can reduce resolution, which, which again is something new to version two. So if you're working and using shots for, say, um, for website building or what have you, and you need to have re reduced resolution, now it might reduce the quality. I haven't tested this yet, but that's something that you might want to take a look at. And you can also decide what you want to happen when you take a shot. So maybe you want to just say, take a shot and you have it directly go to uh, to the trash, but it will save the shot inside of um, the, the, the browser, right? So, you know, you can switch these when you need to, depending on when you need that, right? Same thing with your... Um, with your uh, the uh, recording shots again i forgot to, they got to tell you this you can also now you can do a a, a video recording within uh using screen screen float just like clean shot x now you can do it with screen float right and it's pretty much the same thing and you can also trim those videos uh, when you take them so again play around with that it's right there same thing with your floating shots. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this one is that you can have your floating shots appear, you know, everywhere, or you can say, I want the shot to appear in the current app. And that is really great. So think about if you have some applications that you don't open a lot and you want to keep those shots that you take, you want to keep them kind of pinned to that application, that would be a great way to do that. And in fact, you can also, as you when you take a shot, you can select to have it kept inside a, the current app. So that's something that's brand new, and I don't think any other application has, 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 has does this. Another thing that really is really great here is um, double clicking. You can double click on a shot and have it to uh, enclose a shot, or you can have it do a whole bunch of other things. Um, you know, you can have it hide the shot, or close and move it to the trash, or close and delete the shot. So close and delete the shot means it's not gonna be in your trash, would be totally gone, right? Um, and there's there's a lot of other options here that you can choose from. Now, I, I'm not just like maybe several dozens of things you can do. So you have to figure out like what do you want that double click to do? Now, another thing that you can do is you can hold down a modifier key. And here I have a so when I hold down a modifier key and then I double click, it will 
uh, favorite. So that's the one I'm choosing right now, but I'll probably change it, okay, based upon what I need what I need the most. But man, there is a lot of options here for what you do. That's, that's a huge time saver to be able to do another action on a floating shot. That's great. Um, another thing here you can do is you can have, when you, when you close a shot, you can have it, um, when you hold down the, the option key, you can have it do certain things as well. Um, you know, hide a shot, move it to the trash or delete the shot. And then another thing that I did not show you here is I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, is you can actually, let me try to pull this over here and you can actually do, you can hold down your option key here, for example, and, uh, and right click and you can get a, a, a color code or a hex code that you can copy to your clipboard, right? So this this right here also is another thing that will reduce me having to use another application to do this. And this is totally this is totally great. I really 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 love this. All right, so that's another thing you can do. And uh, so you can do you know you can control the uh, the options here or the settings for your color picker there. And then you have the shop browser in terms of what you want to happen in there. Again. Um, you know, status bar, uh, index shots, uh, use touch ID. If I have you, I don't have touch ID on my uh, particular iMac right now. And how long you want the shots to stay in the uh, trash. So you can do that. And then you can also, you know, you can also enable iCloud Sync if you're using ScreenFloat on another, um, you know, Mac or what have you. And then also you can do a little tip bar if you've already been using this. Man, I'm going to tip him because I think that when I downloaded it from the App Store, right, it uh, was not a, uh, didn't, the upgrade didn't cost. So I'm going to be definitely uh, doing him an insanely generous tip of $6.99. I mean, that's not really a lot to ask. This is not a subscription application, which is the bomb. Now, the big difference between, say, Screen Float and CleanShot X is you can save shots to your CleanShot X account and then send that um, URL uh, to somebody and they can open it up um, in that way. So that's that's one big difference there. Same thing with the video recordings as well. So I still might have to use CleanShot X, but CleanShot X and Screen Float are my two top screenshot applications right and i'm going to be using screen a hell of a lot more but uh, anyway just letting you know i'm not trying to do any kind of competition between those two applications because they both are really great really great there so again if you go back to the if you go back to the uh website here there is tons uh, uh, everything is explained and how to use it. It has some quick videos in there as well, but I just wanted to bring it to you because I want to vouch for this application and let you know that you, if you really want to be productive on your Mac, this is one productivity tool that you should definitely have in your arsenal. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up as well. And then if you're new to my channel, definitely follow uh, this channel because I'm going to be producing videos this year. So definitely do that. And that's the way I know that uh, I'll spend the time if you, you know, support me and, and you know, give it, give it thumbs up. I will be definitely keep producing these videos. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Take, take care to the next one. Take care.